What were Darwin's motives? Part 2. And did his motives destroy his ability to objectively evaluate the evidence against his theory of evolution? Quote 4. From first to last, Darwin's book is a dish of rank materialism cleverly cooked up. And why is this done? For no other reason, I am sure, except to make us independent of a creator. Adam Sedgwick, 1785-1873, British geologist and professor of geology at Cambridge, England. My comment. This quote is consistent with the thesis that Darwin's goal was to destroy Christian theism and replace it with metaphysical materialism, which is a form of atheism. Quote 5. I have read your book with more pain than pleasure. Parts I laughed at till my sides were sore. Others I read with absolute sorrow, because I think them utterly false and grievously mischievous. You have deserted the true method of induction and started off in machinery as wild as Wilkins' locomotive that was to sail with us to the moon. Adam Sedgwick, Letter to Charles Darwin, 1860. Sedgwick was one of Darwin's mentors. He knew his students' motives and character. The quote above was written by Sedgwick after he had read Darwin's book on the origin of species. Quote 6. Darwin. To avoid saying how far I believe in materialism, say only that emotions, instincts, degrees of talent which are hereditary, are so because brain of child resembles parent stock. Charles Darwin, Private Notes. My comment. This quote is consistent with our thesis that Darwin believed in metaphysical materialism, which is a form of atheism. Quote 7. Darwin. I have lately read Money's Life of Voltaire, and he insists strongly that direct attacks on Christianity, even when written with the wonderful force and vigor of Voltaire, produce little permanent effect. Real good seems only to follow the slow and silent side attacks. Charles Darwin, letters dated October 22nd and 24th, 1878, quoted in Gertrude Himmelfarb, Darwin and the Darwinian Revolution, 1982, p. 387. My comment. This quote confirms our thesis that Darwin's goal was to destroy Christian theism and replace it with metaphysical materialism. Quote 8. Darwin. It will be some time before we see slime, snot, or protoplasm generating a new animal, but I have long regretted that I truckled to public opinion and used the pentateuchal term of creation, by which I really meant appeared by some wholly unknown process. Darwin, quoted in Jerry Bergman, The Dark Side of Charles Darwin, pp. 6768, Master Books. My comment, the quotes above are consistent with our thesis that Darwin's goal was to destroy Christian theism and replace it with metaphysical materialism, which is a form of atheism. Conclusion, so what were Darwin's motives? My comment, Darwin was brought up with a deistic, not theistic religious and family background. His motive was to destroy Christian theism and replace it with metaphysical materialism, which is a form of atheism. Conclusion. And did his motives destroy his ability to objectively evaluate the evidence against his theory of evolution? My comment. The evidence indicates that that is exactly what happened. Darwin's metaphysical motives destroyed his ability to handle the scientific evidence objectively. Sometimes, a person can so desperately want something to be true that they selectively perceive only the evidence that seems to support their position and they ignore, or explain away, all of the evidence that falsifies, or contradicts, their position. This is exactly what happened with Darwin, and with generations of his blind faith followers, see below. Darwin's metaphysical motive blinded him to the scientific evidence that shows that random variations and natural selection are limited in their abilities, to microevolution, changes within a species and genus. As we have discussed in many videos, the observational evidence indicates that there are natural limits to random variations and natural selection. These natural limits constrain these material processes to microevolution and falsify the extrapolation of microevolution to naturalistic megaevolution, the atheist myth of single cell to human evolution by random variations and natural selection. Thanks to Gary Hitch for the quotes and text above. The comments and conclusions are mine. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment below if you agree or if you would like to add your thoughts.